Hey, my name is Ryan Earnhardt from CreativeSoundLab.tv, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, some issues that has to do with studio setup. So connections, um, sending signals out and back in, and then also a question about gain staging. So let's get started. Okay, so the first question was about how do I hook stuff up? Uh, it really is pretty simple. Um, everything goes through an interface. So whether your interface is USB, Firewire, um, this one here happens to be a really old Motu, which they called AudioWire, but it's the same as Firewire. You know, the difference is that it goes into a proprietary card that goes in the back of the computer. Now, that's really the only difference. Uh, they have uh, various other interfaces out there, uh, tons of options. Uh, but everything goes through that. Your outs, your inputs, external processing, dedicated outputs, run it out, compress it, EQ it, use reverbs, whatever it may be, run it back in again on an open and available channel, and record it. And essentially it's just like using a freeze function in Ableton Live or commit or whatever functions that um, DAWs have to basically commit to that sound and bounce it down. Uh, so that's a little bit on how you route signals to external effects. Okay, so uh, from here, specifically Ableton Live, Ableton Live actually has a um, external output plugin. So external output basically gives you a way out to the real world through your interface you can process it, you can do whatever you want to it, and plug it back into the input that you have available. You just have to specify which input that this plugin should be listening to. And it does it all in real time. Um, I haven't found any latent latency issues with it. It does sound a little funny, you know, if you're not using all the way dry or all the way wet. So uh, there is a little bit of an issue there. Uh, but it's not something that would hinder, you know, the performance or the timing of a drum track, for example. Um, and that's a little bit how to do it with Ableton Live. Now, manually, you can do this with any DAW, including Ableton, by just simply setting up external output of a track. Uh, this can be done through routing and Reaper, or it can be done um, on an external output within Ableton. And from here, this can be, once again, selecting an output of your interface going out again through your path, whether it be compression or stomp boxes that you have available to you, going back in. And that input is just a track that you're recording. So make sure to select the track, make sure that you're arming, record arming the track that you have, you know, collecting the signal back in. And there you go. You have going out, you have coming back in. Champagne smile in the kitchen. Got your hip against the sink. Bedroom wars and dirty secrets. We talk like lovers on the brink. And I'd say you're superficial. You call me dark and hard to please. There used to be a spark between us. I used to be just what you need. I live in a world of books and paper. I live in a world of wooden string. Your world has high opinions of others. You live in a world where money is king. I come from a long, long line of preachers. I come from a long, long line of saints. St. Augustine and Frederick Nietzsche. St. Frank and Tom Waits. Now, one thing that is kind of important to note is that uh, on these devices, especially the WA-2A that you just saw, is the output, um, when you look at, like, say, the output um, at zero, that zero is representing line level. That voltage is a specific voltage, okay? There's a difference between that and zero on an interface, and this is important. And somehow this escaped me for the longest time. But if you ever notice, you know, on a mixer, you know, the, when you set the, the gain and stuff, it'll seem like it's kind of quiet for being at unity on the individual channel meters. And I thought maybe there was just something wrong or something got messed up. Who knows? 
unity is not the same as unity on the uh, digital interface. All the analog stuff, if you just pull up a manual online, pick a piece of gear, pick a, a mixer, and just look at the headroom of that um, of that piece of gear, okay? It could be anything. Just look at the headroom. It's probably like 20 dB, 25 dB. It's something around 20 and change. So if we were to record our signals at negative six on the interface, well, how much headroom do we really have here? Uh, we can only go six more until we get uh, until we get a uh, distortion that is not favorable. Uh, so we have to actually plan ahead and say, you know what, let's rewrite these numbers on the interface. And let's say that instead of zero on the interface, and including the DAW as well, instead of zero on the DAW, it actually is plus 18. And instead of uh, negative 10 on the DAW, it's actually, would that be plus eight? You have to build in your own headroom. And when you do this, you'll actually, you will notice this. Uh, when you're recording drums, you layer a bunch of stuff. Um, it'll sound a little bit fuller in the low end. It'll sound more punchy in the low end. And uh, also one reason that, that I think this works as well is um, if you don't have the most amazing uh, converters and, and, and most amazing interface. Um, why would you know? Why would you want to stress the analog portions of your device? And especially if you're you know recording tons of toms and low end bass guitar all at once, why would you want to stress that device to the point where you may not get the fullest sound? Uh, it's better to ride the levels a little lower, so that the device itself even has headroom plus. The signals in your doll have a built-in headroom. So that's a little bit about signals, connecting signals. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions about this, or if you want me to make a follow-up video on this, I'd be happy to. I'll be hanging out in the comments below.